check, check. Okay, I think we're back live. And I think we have the sound issue taken care of. So let me know what the sound sounds like once we get started here. I'm gonna turn off the mic. Alrighty, does the mic sound better? I know last time the mic was super loud and distorted, so just let me know in the chat. And uh, yeah, we'll get started. I'm just gonna jam out for a little bit and then if there's people watching at the end, I'll uh, answer any questions, walk through kind of what I'm doing, uh, whatever. Uh, very casual, this is not planned out, so it's very casual. Cool.
Hello. All right. Well, that's it. It's, it looks like there's a couple of you guys on here. Thank you guys for hanging out. Um, happy to answer any questions you have. Otherwise, uh, we'll leave it at that. But it's, it is a bit of a new setup. So if anybody has any questions about that, about what I'm using what for, or any of that stuff, um, happy to share any of the information that I have. Um, go ahead and write stuff in the chat if there's anything that you'd like to know. And I will take a look at that right now. And let's see. Honey Smack, what's going on? Glad to see you. Thank you, thank you. Um, thanks for stopping by all the way from Australia. If any of you have not checked out Honey Smack stuff, you should definitely check out his, uh, his live stuff. He's absolutely phenomenal, amazing. Um, let's see. What are you using what for? <laughs> okay, so um, Analog Rhythm Mark II right here is um, all of the drums. So um, kicks, uh, hats, claps, um, a couple of percussive things, um, anything really that's drums <clears throat> is coming out of here. And then um, all of the synth voices are all coming from the modular up here. That's all being sequenced from the Oxy One, which is right down here. Um, so I have a couple different bass voices that I'm using. One is the Bastel Pizza, which is a pretty cool dual oscillator FM kind of thingy. And then there's the uh, Erica Synth Bass Line, which is kind of like a, uh, a modular version of, of kind of a 303, kind of that sound, uh, very analog soundy. Uh, then I have a, um, a BIA from uh, Noise Engineering, and that is doing a lot of kind of the higher end lead percussive, uh, kind of melodic percussive stuff, if that makes any sense. Uh, then I have the Oxy Coral. Um, so this is eight voices so um, it kind of depends on what's going on at the moment which of the voices i'm using but i can use any of the eight voices um, or multiples or all of them at the same time or whatever so that's what i'm using that for then um, i have the assimilator which is uh, an eight track or an eight voice uh, sample player and sampler um, it's kind of like it's kind of like a detect but in a modular form so it's got eight voices can load samples on that's all being sequenced from the uh, the oxy one as well so a lot of the things that you heard that were kind of like the rave stabs and um and that kind of stuff that was all coming from here um that's just happened to be the samples that i was playing around with today then i have um the 1010 bit box which is basically the same as the black box the the standalone one more or less um and this is Anything that's longer samples, <coughs> so anything that needs to be time stretched, I put through here. Um, this the assimilator is great for one shots and things like that. The uh, the bitbox is great for time stretching stuff. So anything that is like an atmosphere. So here I'll show you, like something like this. Let's see here like something like that, like an atmosphere, background atmosphere sound, so that it, it's like playing long. And the way these, it, these are kind of like clips uh, in Ableton, so you can just hit it to launch it and hit it to stop it. And when you launch it, it'll, uh, it'll loop if you have it set up that way. Um, so it's really good for things like that that you want is kind of like looping long samples. It's also where you heard uh, vocals coming from. So this one. Rhythms. So again, that's Rhythms. one sample that's just on repeat. Rhythms. So like that, anything that's kind of time stretched like that. I also have um, a couple of kind of acid lines in here as well, um, which I use sometimes. I think I use this one. Yeah. But basically, 
anything that's a longer sample, uh, you can have in there, which is great. And this isn't actually being sequenced by anything because they're not they're not one shots. So I'm actually just triggering these manually with the touchscreen. So anytime I want to trigger a you know a vocal, I can just hit that vocal and it'll it'll play that out. Um, other stuff that's in here, a couple of the Pam's workouts for like different modulation stuff and clocking stuff. Um, this module right here is um, the Endorphins Ghost, which uh, they just came out with a new pedal version of, but this is the modular version of it. Um, they did this in conjunction with Andrew Wong, and it's basically, it's got a filter, a compressor, an overdrive, a delay, reverb, um, compressor, sidechain, um, distortion, everything all in one unit. Um, what I love about this is I kind of have it on a send, so I can send anything that I want to it. Um, so, for example, if I was playing something on the BIA, like this. Right, something relatively simple. But then if I send it through the ghost, it does this. And then with the filter, you can kind of filter out parts of it and move it around. So you get a ton of stuff that you can do just from having, you know, everything be able to go through that one module. So I have it set up on a send so that I can send really anything from here. Um, I don't usually send anything from the rhythm there, <coughs> but Anything from the modular is set up to be able to go through the ghost if I want to at any point in the uh, in the in a performance. Um, what's great about that is that one of the things with uh, with performing live is that things can um, they can sound thin if you're not if you don't have like layers and layers and layers and layers of instruments like you would if you were just producing something maybe in the box. So what's good about this is that you can add a bunch of um, layers and a lot of sonic interest to things without having to have a whole bunch of individual modules each doing that stuff. So I like it as just kind of an atmosphere creator. Um, that's kind of what I, use the, what I use the ghost for. What else? Anyone else got a question here? Do, 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 do. Bottom end is coming through nicely. Love the processing, whatever that might be. Oh, thanks. So um, actually, I'm trying out something new right now, which I had never used before. This is actually the first time I've used it in a live stream. Um, this module right up here that you can see that's kind of buried under all these wires with all the flashing lights. Um, this is an Expert Sleepers ES9. And what this is, is a 16 in, 16 out, um, uh, audio interface in one module that's this wide. So basically everything from the from the uh, modular case is all patched into this. And then one USB cable is going out to the computer that's sitting here that has uh, Ableton running as just the mixer. So um, just mixer and effects in Ableton. So that's why I just saw somebody ask about the launch control. So that's why the launch control and the, the Chic N32, these are all mapped to uh, channels and effects and things like that inside of the, the mixer in Ableton. So this is, um, I don't know if you can see this on here, but this is um, the Bastille Pizza. There's a pulse wave that comes out of that. The baseline, the BIA, the Oxy, the black box, the rhythm, and the assimilator. So each one of them has volume faders here, um, just like you would if I had a traditional mixer, but this way I've got it just in a, uh, in a, um, MIDI controller format. Then each one of these rows controls what's in that row. So the bottom row is filter. Um, I have this built in there as a kind of a DJ style filter. So it's a high pass and then low pass, kind of depending on which way you turn it. If it's in the middle, it's, uh, it's not filtering at all. So just like you would have on a DJ mixer. Then um, this next level is a delay send. And then the top level is a reverb send. And so that way I've got um, high pass, low pass, delay, and reverb on each one of these channels. Then the, um, the Chic 
uh, N32, this is set up for the five voices that I'm using out of the eight in the assimilator. Um, so I'm only using five here because I didn't have enough um, I didn't have enough outputs to get more than that out. Um, so each one of the channels of the assimilator has a channel here that's basically set up exactly like these. So the bottom row is volume, then high pass, low pass filter, then delay send, then reverb send. So that's that first section here. Um, this little box that I have kind of boxed off over here, this is a whole bunch of performance effects. Um, so there's a riser, which combines a high pass filter, a delay and a reverb that kind of all open together as you open that up um, for doing like builds up, build ups before breakdowns. Uh, just a plain high pass filter, high pass with a reverb, high pass with a delay, just a delay and just a reverb. So that's what those six effects are mapped right there. And then everything around that, um, that kind of L-shaped bit that goes around it, that's all of the sends to the ghost by instrument. So if I wanna send the BIA to the ghost, I can send it there. And again, that's all uh, mapped in the mixer in Ableton. And so um, I'm not using Ableton to sequence anything. I don't have any sounds coming from Ableton. Um, there's no loops playing in Ableton. There's no clips. There's no. There's nothing recorded that's in there. It's just acting as um, a mixer so that I can control everything from here. Um, so that's what the controllers are being used for. The um, the so everything from the modular case is going in through the ES9, and the uh, analog rhythm is just connected via USB to the computer and I have Overbridge running in there and every channel on this is mapped to a separate channel via Overbridge so that I can group my kicks and rumbles together in one bus and then I've got um, some other sounds that are grouped together. All of the, um, all of the higher, higher end stuff is all kind of grouped together and then I can treat that the same. And then what's giving the, the low end is that on the master channel that's coming out from that mixer, I have kind of some end of chain mastering, like what I was using before, I was using the uh, electron analog heat. And I just kind of did, I mimicked what I was doing there inside, uh, inside that master bus so that I could get kind of similar stuff out of it. Uh, the only thing that I added that wasn't in the analog heat is the limiter on the end of it. So, let's see here. Let's see, use the Mapulator Max for Live effects for the filters, no. Um, basically, everything that's in, um, that I'm using right now is all uh, standard Ableton stuff. I didn't use, um, I didn't use even any Max for Live stuff because what I wanted to make sure is if I do end up, um, the, the idea of, of trying to do it this way is to do something that's a little bit more scalable um, as I travel, I've got a little bit of international travel coming up and I wanted to make sure that I could um, get it as small as I could for travel. Um, so basically I take my laptop with me anyway for work and then I have um, this whole modular case fits into one side of my rolling carry-on and then um, all these other controllers and everything just fit my backpack. So that way I can take everything carry on. I don't have to check anything. And by doing that, by doing the mixer through here, um, I, was, is, I am able to travel without the Octatrack that I was using as the performance mixer, the analog heat that was my end of chain, um, and the 1010 black box because now I have the bit box in here and I was using the uh, Syntact for voices. And so I added the assimilator and that's kind of taking the place of the voices that I was using in the, in the Syntact. So I was able to uh, reduce down by four machines um, that I'll be traveling with less things. Um, if I'm doing stuff locally, I'll still play with my same normal setup. And in that case, I just pull the um, ES9 out um, the ghost goes into that spot, the bit box comes out and I'll use the black box as the exter external. And then in this same space right here is where I'll put um, my WMD performance mixer back in. And so then I'll be able to route everything exactly the same. So all the rest of this stays exactly the same. Um, the only thing that I change up is I take out the, the audio interface that is interfacing with the computer, 
move one module, take this one out and it gets replaced with the outboard black box and that's it. Everything else stays, uh, stays together. So let's see what else here. Sounds great. Thanks. <coughs> Sorry for the coughs and getting over a cold. Checking in from Wisconsin. Hey, John, how's it going? I'm the reason you bought the Oxy One. Sweet. Manuel will be happy to hear that. <laughs> the guy who made the Oxy One. Um, super cool guy, incredibly smart, and uh, yeah, made a great piece of gear. It's, it's kind of a must have for me right now. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's sequencing every single thing that's in my modular case. When I was using the Syntact, it was sequencing the Syntact because I could um, control things in key, which you can't do in the Syntact. So yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Let's see, manipulator is super. It will not tax your CPU. Let's put a bunch of things on one knob, map their values to curves. Well, um, so actually, so doing um, macros like that, so mapping multiple things to one knob is exactly what I did here. I just built them myself. So I went in and I put in, you know, the the filters that I like, the the uh, reverbs that I like and put the settings that I like. And then I can map multiple things to one macro knob. And then I can map that one knob to, sorry, to a knob here. So I can do that. Let's see. Oh, connecting the Wisconsin folks. <laughs> Sweet. Um, any other questions about anything on here? It's, it's a bit different, like I said, than, uh, than any of the setups that I've been using previously. Um, a lot of the voices are the same. I took out a, um, I had a Platts clone here. I just wasn't using all the voices and I really loved the sound of this, uh, the Bastel pizza. So I wanted to put that in um, and give it a try for some basses, which I love it. And going through this WMD carbon filter, I just love the sound of it. Um, so that's really the only thing that I swapped out. Everything else is kind of staying the same. And then I took out some of the modulation sources that I wasn't getting very much use out of and I replaced that with the, with the assimilator so that I get those, get all those extra voices in here just so that I could have some, uh, some more fun sounds. Um, yeah. And then, um, <coughs> sorry, the, uh, the way I have the, uh, the Oxy one set up is uh, sequencer one is the modular. So I've basically just got three tracks that I'm using on that in a multi-track and that's sequencing the Bastel, the Ergosynth baseline and the VIA. Then sequencer two is set up to sequence the five voices on the assimilator. <coughs> and sequencer three is set up to uh, sequence the eight voices in the Oxy Coral. So that way I can basically sequence every voice that's in here just on those three sequencers. I have an extra sequencer that I could use for whatever, but I'm not actually using it at the moment. Um, but yeah, and that way I'm, I'm, allowed, I'm able to uh, make some patterns if I want. <coughs> Excuse me. If I find something, you know, that I really like when I'm uh, messing around, I can save that pattern, but it's also really easy to improvise stuff on the fly with this. Uh, one of the things that I really love about it, probably more than, um, more than anything else is, um, so let's say if we were to just do, Okay, so I'm just gonna clear this one out of here. So this would be the sequence for the, the pizza. So if I wanted to, I can actually create um, really easily a uh, Euclidean rhythm. So if I want to, so this is like one pulse and you just figure out how many, how long you want the pattern to be. So let's say we want it to be 12 steps long. So it's interesting. And then you can start just adding pulses in to the supplement. Adding pulses in. And it doesn't sound like a lot when you've got it just like this, right? 
but then as soon as you add a kick in with it, and then you can go in and actually randomize just the uh, the pitch of these if you want to, or you can go in and just change the pitch. So let's say you just wanted to change the pitch of this note. So it's really easy to just kind of improvise stuff on the fly like that. And then again, if you wanted just to, um, just to randomize those, but staying within key, you can just randomize like this. And each time you hit, it randomizes to a different um, pitch, but it's randomizing just the notes that you have in your sequence. So it's not adding additional notes. Then if you just want to change up your Euclidean sequence, you can make that like 15 steps and then make it whatever. to again randomize those notes. And that's the that's set up with that Euclidean rhythm, 15 steps, 10 pulses. But if you wanted to change that up, and let's say let's make it 12, and make it seven, for example. And then you can add in some effects to that. Then if you want to get it really messy, I can send that to the uh, to the ghost, as I was mentioning before. So so that's that same little sequence just being sent through the ghost. If I take it back, take it out of the ghost's end now. That's the sequence and then I'll send it again. One of the cool things about the pizza is that it has its main output, but it also has just a pulse wave output. And that pulse wave is following along with what you're doing um, melodically, but it's not gated. So it kind of gives you a, just like an underlying sub. And I have that side chain to the kick. So if, if, if I add that in, you'll hear it here. Here, let me pull out that ghost so it's not messing things up so much. But listen as I add in the, the low end. So that's the regular output and the pulse. Now listen, when I pull out the pulse, how different it sounds. So you lose a ton of that kind of fullness in the low end back in again. And 
then I can add back in those effects. gives you kind of a cool foundation. Then um, adding in things like um, hats, for example, from the rhythm. doing before. And then I can send the BIA to the ghost. So just to give you an idea of how easy it is to kind of build up something from scratch, the, the whole point of this setup, the way I built it like this, was to be able to improvise on. So there's a, I have some foundational things, like I have some drum patterns in here. You know, on pad one, it's always gonna be a kick. It's always gonna be a four on the floor kick, but every kit, I have a different kick in there. So if I wanna mix that up, I can just change up the kits. Um, I've also got some rumbles that go along with those, like here. If I wanna just add those in. So I can have that rolling part if I want, or I can just keep the kick with just kind of that boomy kick sound, which I love. Then I've got, um, up here on the top, I've always got hats. So a couple of different opens hats. Um, one of the cool things with the analog rhythm is that each track has um, uh, its analog synthesis. Um, so with this, um, this sound, for example, let's see. So this sound right here of that hi-hat, that's, synthesized sound that's made right here using the parameters. So I can mess with that if I want. I can add to the decay. I can shorten it up. I can kick off some of the attack. So you're basically making that sound, but also every pad also has a sample layer. So with my, my uh, uh, symbols, I also have a symbol underneath it or with it in a sample. So if I wanna mix that in, in any kind of different amounts, I can mix that in and make uh, different symbols. So if I just start to bring in a, a open hat sample now on top of this, so it makes a bunch of different uh, open hats. I can go back and take out the synth if I want. So that's only the sample now. That's both. And that's only the synth voice. And I made the synth voice um, shorter and the other one longer, the sample longer, so that I can um, really make differences between them. So if you listen, like when the whole thing's playing in context, very subtle hat now like this but if I want to add some more energy I can just layer that other hat in on top of it and that starts to give us some more drive and some more energy some more power driving the song forward so it's just it's set up to be able to improvise on just like that it's set up to be able to 
make changes while you're going, make the sounds that you want to hear. So if you're, you're playing along and you're thinking like, man, this needs a, you know, I need a better hat. Well, rather than like you would in a doll, let's go start to look for hats and let's go through our hat folder and let's do whatever. This is really set up so that you can make them on the fly um, so that you can keep going the whole time making everything that you need all along the way. Um, I have the same thing with kicks. I have the same thing with, um, with some of the percussive sounds as well, where they're layered with samples so that you can mix them together and kind of make whatever sounds you're looking for um, in the moment. Then with, um, obviously with the Oxy One, you saw how easy it is to improvise that way. Um, a couple things that are really important about the way the Oxy One works is that um, it's set up as, um, you can, for on each synth, uh, on each sequencer, you can set a, uh, a root note and a scale. So you can keep everything in key. And then when you're doing all those randomization things, like randomizing pitches or adding random uh, notes into your pattern or whatever, it adds those things in, in that key. So what's great about that is that I can make sure that everything stays in key together, even though I'm improvising. And it was something that was really important for me um, in setting this up is that I didn't want to have a bunch of preset songs that I had, you know, basically written a track in, in studio in Ableton, then taken that track apart into a bunch of little pieces so that I could load it into a kind of a pseudo live set and then just reassemble it again in front of people. I wanted to be able to actually write songs in front of the crowd while I'm playing live. And so everything is set up here so that it's, um, they're all kind of building blocks and pieces and parts and sounds and things like that that you can use to make uh, a different track. So you can have something, for example, that is, um, that is really super drivey like this, like we were just playing a minute ago. And then I can get one of the basses going. Let's see here. something kind of going like that but if you want to change up your baseline it's really easy again to go in and just set it up as a um, as a Euclidean sequence so that was just changing up the number of steps in the sequence I can go back to where it was If you're just kind of playing along and this is what you're grooving with <coughs> but you decide that you want it to be to turn into something a bit more melodic well i know that i've got some melodic sounds in my assimilator and i've also got some atmospheres in the black box so i'll bring in an atmosphere and do a break that melodic sequence is in key with the bass. I didn't plan on playing those two together, but as long as I keep them in that same key within the Oxy One, I can make sure that whatever I bring in is gonna be in the right key.
Then I've got my effects here so I can do a riser before I bring my bass and my kick drum back in. So it gives us a melodic element that we didn't have before that I wasn't planning on putting in, but because I know they're in the same key because of the Oxy-1, I can bring that in. If I don't want that one, I can bring in a different melodic element. Or a different one. So you can hear that's a totally different melodic element than the other one, but it's in the same key. Because I have, if, if everything that you have, all your samples are set to uh, C, then with the Oxy-1, you can just do offsets of however much you want. And you can also say whatever key you want it to be in. So like, so like right now for this, um, I'm in Phrygian E. And so that's the E is the root note of everything here, and it's in the Phrygian scale. So anything that I do to um, improvise within this will all be within that key. So if I was to go into my, you know, pull everything out. That's just my assimilator. So if I was to go in and just take those out. Now I got nothing in there. Um, that is, let's make that a, I don't know, 13 bar or 13 step. Why not? Just to make it weird. And then. And then if I want to go in and randomize those steps or those pitches, Now I've got another melodic element. Then I can bring my kick and hat back in. And that little melody with that stab that's there is all just improvised now. And if I want to change it up, Let's just change up the, the pitches again. And then if I go back and I change the number of steps, let's make it 12 steps now and seven. And then let's mix up those pitches again. Now, if I bring back in my bass, it's gonna be in key with that. Even though we changed every single thing about that section, now I can bring back in that same bass line. So you see everything's set up really so that it can all be improvised on the fly. So that's that's the trick is that um, I don't spend a ton of time writing tracks. Um, I spend basically no time writing tracks to play live because what I do is I spend my time practicing on my gear, practicing improvising live and getting things set up so that it can all be played live. What's great about that is that when you go out to play, you don't have a, a, a preset uh, live set that you're that you can just play X number of songs. I can only play you know 45 minutes. I can only play an hour, whatever. If um, you know, I went to a, a gig recently and um, somebody didn't show up earlier, so I started a little earlier and ended up playing a little later. I was supposed to play an hour, ended up playing an hour and 45 minutes. And it's okay because I, I'm not, I don't run out of material because I'm, I have the building blocks here to make stuff up and improvise stuff on the fly so I can just, uh, yeah, so I can just uh, make it up. And 
That's the fun part. It's uh, I saw somebody in the chat saying that the techno was like jazz, and I totally agree with you. I've said for years that techno is the jazz of electronic music because it's not literal like a lot of other music where you're listening to a song, the song sounds sad, the song sounds happy, the lyrics are happy or sad and they go with that and the lyrics tell a story that's literal. And with techno, it's much more a soundtrack and a vibe, a soundtrack to the, to the evening. So it's that improvised part of it. And so that's why for me, it's really important when I play techno out live to play it um, as improvised as I possibly can because that way it's the soundtrack for that evening, it's the soundtrack for that gig, that space for those people that were there. And so it kind of, um, it puts all of that together and I kind of translate that into music. So if it feels like people want something a little bit, you know, more melodic, more driving, more whatever, <coughs> I can mix that up and play it however rather than um, as if I was DJing, I would have to go through and find the song. Did I pull the right tracks? Do I have the right one? Is there the right song for the vibe? You know, do I have enough of the right songs for the vibe? With this, you just make it as you go. Very much like jazz. The other thing um, I've keep it, uh, I've, the other thing that I've uh, compared it to in the past is like a jam band where, you know, you take a band like, the Grateful Dead or something like that, when they would play there, it was, they were playing the same sound and you know, they had structures of some songs, but for the most part, they were, you know, every show was different. Every show was unique. Every jam was different as they evolved as musicians, what they would play in their performances would, would evolve. So if you kind of combine those two things together and then make it electronic with synthesizers and drum machines, instead of guitars and, trombones and trumpets and clarinets, then uh, yeah, you have improvised techno. Let's see, any other questions? Improvised techno is better than studio techno, yes. <coughs> Sorry, sounds great, thank you. Cool, well, I guess that's it for this. Uh, just wanted to give you guys a little walkthrough, wanted an excuse to, to jam and do a little live stream. I uh, appreciate you guys' patience with the uh, sound issues at the beginning. I found out that my input was set on mic level instead of line level, so it was making everything sound all distorted, so now everything's good. Um, but yeah, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you have any other questions, um, pop them down into the comments. I'll be happy to answer as much as I can, Or shoot me a direct message or whatever. But anyway, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. And uh, <coughs> sorry, see you all the next time. Hopefully I'll be coughing and sniffing less when I see you next. Thanks again for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Bye.